fighting God. Sleeping slaves. Sleeping slaves. Fate. <laughs> A poly After GR has done its job, the series now flashes back to the events immediately before the story even began, in one of the most important and, again, misunderstood arcs of Jojo. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay, dude. Bring it. Oh, dude. Oh. oh. Rain upon me dude. your wisdom. So you can't just laugh people going, this is boring. You go, no, you're misunderstood because his eyes. Did you see his eyes, though? Oh, I can't wait. That that's li that was literally one of his points. <laughs> you don't understand this part. Please explain to me why I don't understand this part. Well, his eyes open. Uh. <laughs> Sleeping Slaves. This arc is unique in that it's an epilogue that completely recontextualizes the entire story. Up to now, we have been talking a lot about how both Diavolo and the gang have been trying to over- I only see Gio. Where's the gang? Yeah, seriously. Gang? He couldn't even. He couldn't even. It Why did he it. use a manga version of Dia, but the the anime version of Jordo? Come and oppose fate. It's that been arguably because the most that's a PNG. You're lazy. I was just about to say he probably found a PNG. Is that the reason, my dude? <laughs> Prominent theme of the entire part. And now, Sleeping Slaves confirms to us that overcoming fate completely was never possible in the first place. But Gio did. <clears throat> he said that. He said Gio did. But now, he said he was the hand of fate, dealing out righteous punishment. But now, no? I, when, when he did? <laughs> so, basically, your whole point is, part five is worthless in terms of resolve changing fate. It's just worthless because it was never possible It was anyway. never possible. So why is that good? Because all that resolve you love, worthless. Changing fate? Well, you can't. It's inevitable. Fate came for Dia and he can't got his comeuppance, but then so did everybody else because fate is impossible to change. So Bruno getting up and corpsing himself just doesn't matter. Mm -mm. That resolve, whatever. Nothing. That was fate all along. Impossible. <laughs> In Sleeping Slaves, we see Bucciarati's gang encounter Rolling Stones, a stand not controlled by its user, but rather, fate itself. This bowling ball of doom will sense when a person is fated to die soon and begin targeting them. It will essentially become a teleporting stalker until it manages to touch that person, granting them a painless, immediate death. This ability... Pause. Isn't everyone fated to die? Correct. So wouldn't but it soon. be on a constant... So the bowling ball knew that he would die. And soon. so soon, let's say when Diablo... No, because he said it detects when they are about to die soon. Okay. So he grants so, them a painless death. So when Diablo was about to hit him when he hit him in the stomach and he was supposed to die right there. But that's not so. What else could he be talking about? Because he literally just said soon. <laughs> so I guess Bruno was going to die before then? <laughs> until, no. they until they changed the impossible fate? <laughs> oh yeah, Leaky Eye Luca was about to take care of business. So hold on. Was there nobody close that was about to... Weren't they in a hospital or something? Or was it an apartment complex? I think it was an apartment complex. Okay. There was nobody that was going to die before Bruno there? This is, this is one of the most contrived things. It's stupid. It's so stupid. A kind salvation from the inevitable fate ordained for you. And inevitable it is. As the stone begins targeting Bucciarati, Mista fights it and manages to break awesome. and seemingly... Dude, you couldn't wait the one week before this this freaking Sleeping Slaves came out to put out this video instead of just using a manga. It is what it is. He, he could have waited. <laughs> it is what it is. Because um, if he puts out the video before the last part, people are still looking up Golden Wind stuff. 
after that part's over, you don't get as many people looking up Golden Wind. I, I always look up. Yeah, okay, you. But I, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah go I'm, into I'm not a, normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I dig it, I dig it. Yeah. This is the but most again, amount of people at any time. I was just about up. to say, then again, they could just be looking up the final fight for just the hype, oh, action moment, but apparently not because it was just a couple punches and it's just over. So I guess that is just the best time. Yeah. He defeated. He seemingly prevents Bruno's fate. However, fate is unchangeable, and any transgression against it will be punished. Pause. Mi Dia did that for many years. Years. Uh, oh, I'm I gonna, I, I, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Well, I punched you. Well, no, you didn't. Fate is changed. Otherwise, I would have been flying back through the air, but I just erased that time. I saw it and I erased it. That's not... He did it. It's not impossible to change fate. He did it constantly. But then he, he got the worst punishment. Naranja was about to shoot him with... with, with I almost called him Metalocalypse. Metallica. And he just erased it. Yep. It, it was his fate to die there. Uh, apparently not. He, he resisted the fate. So you can only resist fate for so long until you die, like all humans do. Well, this is like the final destination. <laughs> this fight against Rolling Stones causes the fate of death to spread to two other members of the gang, Narancha and Abakio. Why? Literally. Why? Not. Just because? Just because? Just uh, uh, fate? There was yeah. I don't. Know. It's it's literally no reason why. Mm -mm. It's just fate. So again. All that resolve and feeling and emotion is Not worthless because this was always going to happen. It was all... Narancia was always going to die. Always. So him going with Bruno and all of them and stealing his resolve is worthless. Because you were supposed to do this. Hey, in a week's time, I'm going to I'm gonna uh, put a million dollars into your bank account. Hey, guys, let's go rob that bank over there for a million dollars. Like, No. It, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a meal either way. So these three characters were doomed to die before Again, our story. Again, why is Bruno the manga? Uh, that's, that's just an editing thing that's just bothering me. Nothing to do thematically or anything, but dude, that's, that's just kind of lazy. We even began. But wait, how can this be? For this entire video, we have been talking about how the themes of the story Dude, revolve around the no. resolve. Okay, okay, maybe no, he's about no. to bring it back. Maybe we were a little hasty in our judgment. Maybe he's about to bring it back. Do you believe he's going to? It's possible! Unless he can't change fate. Mm. To overcome and oppose fate. But now that's impossible? Was this entire video as pointless as this entire story? Okay! No. Uh, what did you think it was gonna? You thought you were gonna say yes? Yeah. What? I thought it was gonna be no. A big old it. No. Yeah. And then it's just like it. Subscribe. No. No. You legit thought you was gonna say yes? It's pointless. Yeah. Cause it's like the whole story is about fate, right? So it's like it's pointless to go against fate. You this legit is all thought? Yeah, bro. I, I thought you were thinking like, okay, let's see how he explains himself, because mm -mm. he's clearly just gonna say no. Mm -mm. Dude, seriously? I legit do. Yes, that's what fate is. That's how I thought he was gonna end it. Who's the bigger fool, the fool or the fool that fools the fool? The second. <laughs> oh, because thanks to sleeping slaves. We finally understand how fate works. What? We finally understand how fate works. Well, fate is unchangeable. It's inevitable. But now, once it's contextualized, that's when we understand how it works. Not the fact that Dia explained it several times. You're going to shoot me, and then you just didn't shoot me because fate. You weren't fated to shoot me. I see what's gonna happen, and it always happens unless I intervene. We have covered extensively. Fate favors those who go through the complete process, no, who it stick doesn't. by their actions, and fate favored Dia through like all his life until this one moment. Fate favored uh, uh, Joseph when he just got lucky and the volcano erupted. 
He didn't, he didn't try. He was just like, I'm going to die and hopefully take you with me somehow. There was no effort there. If he could have, he would have skipped the C. He would have skipped right over B. Consistent effort, resolve, and sacrifice in their pursuit to overcome their destiny. And now, we learn that completely overcoming fate is simply not possible, but that's the whole point. Only the most... Is this not what I just said? Is this not what no, I just... he's saying it's not... It's, it, it, this is basically going, yeah, that movie was bad. It's supposed to be bad. Yeah, yeah that character's true. bad. It's supposed to be bad. Yeah. Yeah, you can't change fate, but you're not supposed to be able to change fate unless you can change fate like Jorno did. Except what is he life. saying? What is he saying? Let's see and refined resolve would ever be able to face and oppose their fate head on, even with it being ultimately unchangeable. It was never about defeating fate, it was about being able to live and fight and move forward accepting your fate in the hope that your resolve and sacrifice will make even the tiniest positive change in the future. Pause. What did Nanacha change? Nothing. He died and he gave Jordan his body back. He didn't steal anybody's resolve or anything. They were always going to go after Requiem and Dia. If fate is unchangeable, there's no positive or negative to fate because it's all preordained. It, it's all. So the fact that they're just like, if if um Abakio was just like, I know I'm going to die right here because he goes, if, if Dia goes, if you show my face, I'm going to kill you. And then that happens. That's something else. But he didn't know he was going to die right there. He thought he was protected and safe. So that's just, that's not a sacrifice. He was just sitting there and then he died. How is that a sacrifice? What did Naracha sacrifice? What? What resolve did Naracha have when he died off screen? What resolve did, did Abakio have? He showed, he did his job and showed them their face. Okay. That was it. But it doesn't matter because fate. And I'm just going to ignore the things that do, not, uh, that do not support my views. Bruno was always destined to die. As were Narancia and Abacchio after Rolling Stones was stopped. But they... Pause. Why those two? Is there a reason or is that just random? Random fate. That's satisfying. Alongside if the it was just like the two people that you're thinking about right now are also going to die. And he goes, oh crap, I owe Nanacha six bucks. Nanacha's in there. But no, it's just literally random. And if Bruno dies, they lose. Mm -hmm. So like, if, if the stone hit Bruno, none of this happens. And Dia wins. Easily. So, thank you? Because otherwise, how are they going to move up in the ranks, get the mission to take Trish over there? There's no way that they could. Yep, nobody else knew about the money but Bruno. Um, and even if they did, his zipper, his zipper, when he dies, it, it, it just completely dissipates. So it just dissipates and a bunch of money comes out of a toilet. <laughs> That's, that, that's just random money for nobody. Plus, Gio never meets uh, Bruno, so he doesn't really do anything with the gang. So, thank you for changing Impossible Fate. Dot, dot, dot. Or, or was it the fate that he would change the fate? This is why fate is trash. That's why it's such garbage. It's just like time travel. It's so garbage. Their main cast, minus Fugo, face the challenge head on. They all move forward and don't let themselves be held back by fate. No matter how many hardships life threw at them, no matter how much suffering they were ordained to endure, they moved onwards to their goal. Except for Fugo. Their actions were born of truth, of a resolute desire to bring change and a better world. But fate preordained this anyway so, so it doesn't matter it legitimately doesn't matter they are still sleeping slaves and they're thus, not changing anything their actions are allowed to translate into reality you may not what <laughs> <laughs> their actions are allowed to change into reality 
What does he mean? <laughs> what does he, he mean? He is trying so hard to sound deep. But this is pure bush. What are you talking about? I think this is for the people who either like they're 100% in or they're just like they're playing a game and listening to me every now and again and just sort of, yeah, man, yeah, whatever, change fate ordained. And they're not getting the fate is impossible to change except for Giorno has to hand the fate to change it because he has to resolve to change it, but it's still unchanging and that's the point. Be able to completely twist or change fate immediately, but by way of continuous effort, it can be influenced and directed into a better faded future. No, it, no it wasn't because all three still died. Yes, quite brutally as a matter of fact. So what happened? They, I'm sure they still did resolve and they moved forward and they did all the actions that became reality and they all faded to die, still die. And they all still die. So what happened? I guess they just didn't believe enough or fate was just not in their favor enough? Or oh, why not? They had the resolve and the grit and all the stuff that fate favors. Maybe you, ha maybe they had their res their stored up resolve points, and that equaled another hour. Every <laughs> resolve point that you get, you yeah, I'll, I'll give you another hour of life. Cash them boys in, <laughs> it's like an RPG. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! As Scolippi says upon seeing Mrs. Jesus! Will. during the arc, one can hope that this will and resolve will eventually fill their path with meaning and significance. This Did he turn to the camera while he said that? This is such hack bush. It is. I don't know what Iraqi did with this because there is no worse part. There's no part that comes anywhere close to being this bad. This ham handed. This, this just mushing it right in your face. And I don't understand what happened here. Aided suffering. Compare this to Diavolo. While the gang faces their fate head on, understanding the possibility and even the inevitability of death and suffering, Diavolo runs from it. He, as opposed to our modern crusaders, is completely defined by his fear of fate because he lets it. He sees himself as a champion of fate, a king of kings who can never lose. He denies that him being defeated is even possible. Villains, Frieza, Dio, Cell, Arlars, anything, anybody, Gucci. anywhere! Going as far as to think he's dreaming or hallucinating. When Villains! <laughs> no, only Dio! Only him! Because of fate. When things Friggin' when Dio was just like, did he just move? What the f happened there? But then he just go, no, it's impossible. This is my stop time. Oh, it's a magnet. Of course it was impossible. Don't go his way. Diablo is completely obsessed with fate and lets his obsession not only corrupt him, but also control who he is. He ran from reality for his entire life and deluded himself into believing that he was chosen by fate. And so he receives he the ultimate punishment. For the liar, the thief, yeah, the betrayer of his own perfect. resolve and will, for the coward who ran from reality, fate and requiem bestowed a never-ending death, an ironic immortality that denies him the ability to ever face reality. He begins the story as the status quo, the unknowable entity that holds his environment in an iron grip of unchanging dominance. And now, he will remain both unchanged and unable to change anything. He was given a world where he could never face reality, not even the reality of death. He's immortal now, but he'll never have any impact on the world, unlike Abacchio, Bruno, and Arancia. How, well, how, well, how? how? What did what Abacchio? Abacchio gave him the face, which led to Naponarath. That's fine. We can say that's but fine. But no, we can't. Because that was before his death that he changed the whatever, whatever. So everything Dia, he's saying he's uh, he's unable to unlike them. So everything <laughs> Dia did before his death doesn't matter. So everything <laughs> they did in their death shouldn't matter. So why were why are theirs allowed to count but Dia's isn't? <laughs> a 
cruel but fitting punishment. Don't even explain it. No. Nope. Don't would even he? explain Why it. Why? How did they change? You're not here for explanations. You're here to say you hear the word fate a thousand times. For here the man I go. Who ran from destiny. Additionally, his constant skipping to results is an impatient, childish way to interact with fate. He was too arrogant, too cowardly, and too selfish to go through the actions and sacrifice necessary to create future change. Like what? What are you? You're thinking way too far into this. Is Dio stuck in the moment? That's why he stops time. Is it? Are we just gonna? Kira wants to erase his people, so so he does. <laughs> For him, it's, oh, he wants to resolve, and he wants to skip it, so he's childish. What? <laughs> he wanted immediate, easy results, and for that, he was punished. So did Kira, really. Yeah. He didn't go through the meticulous of erasing fingerprints or anything. He just went, explode, get you out the light. You're just, ch you're not even chunks, you're dust. Jorno, meanwhile, has faced every challenge head first. He, alongside his gang. So does every person in Jorno, on person the other hand, faced all, all the challenges it. head on. Only him. Everybody else was just cowards. Never wavered and never ran from he, what fate. Pause. This man ain't say Beach Boys once in this entire thing. <laughs> How dare! This is why Gold is. I mean, uh, Golden Wind is good. And you don't say Beach Boys? ...had in store for him, instead using his resolve to push himself oh. forward despite the pain they all knew was likely waiting for them. But they all did but that. But they all did that! So why this Except for Fugo! Who ran like a puss. Like a punk bitch! Hey, you know what? Fate ain't punish him. N no! It didn't! Fate he didn't him. have the resolve! What's his punishment? Oh, he evolves his stand into a nigh unbeatable stand in the future. And he's welcomed back into the gang with open arms. When he ran. And it was Jorno's shining light that led. Oh. oh. It's Jorno's shining light. Shows Bruno. <laughs> 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 Jordan shining light, not picture. Jordan. <laughs> he guided them, not through leadership per se, but by his. But he was a better leader at times. Yes. Unwavering will to fulfill his dream, his resolve influencing each member so that they themselves can go on to influence reality. See, here, oh Jesus Christ with this reality bush. No other person needed the JoJo to go, I'm gonna steal my resolve now. They're their own people with their own goal doing their own thing. Koichi grew completely independently of Josuke. That was his own, you actively saw growth. Josuke wasn't involved in any of it. <laughs> Not a bit. But you need Jorno to directly go, y'all need to be better. <laughs> and they're just going, you, you know what? I didn't even think of that. Bruno, why didn't you tell me I needed to be better? I guess I trust Jorno more now. It's he deserves to be the Jorno's capo. unflinching will eventually led him closer to the truth than anyone else. What is this truth you keep <laughs> talking about? <laughs> the truth of what? <laughs> Allowing him to become the arbiter of fate. His resolve forged a path to lasting positive change in his environment, and for that, fate gifted him with the eminence of punishing Diavolo for good. No. We humans are... Oh! Oh! No, no, let's see where he's going with this. I think he's definitely gonna tie this all back together. I truly believe that. I put too much faith yeah, in it. Yeah, but dude, after an hour plus, you like, oh, dude, he's about to hit us with that okey-doke. 
I I see what you do here. And you just like, well, we just felt stupid for three plus hours yelling at this dude about fate and all this. And he about to hit us with that okie doke. But then you got level two'd, homie. I worked myself into a shoot. A hundred percent. Our lives last short, and while we delude ourselves into positions of dominance and power, our actual individual influence over our environment and world are rather modest. Like most organisms, we live out our existence in relative irrelevance as the cosmos around us changes and operates in ways we cannot and will not understand or ever be able to partake in. It can sometimes indeed feel like we are sleeping slaves, chained to a destiny we simply cannot foresee or change, a fate out of our control. If destiny cannot be seen, it can't be changed because it's destiny, it's always gonna come. So even if you think you're changing your destiny, you are always destined to do the thing that you change. That's what destiny is. That's what fate is. There's no changing it. So this whole uh, changing for the positive to morph their actions into reality it was predetermined to be this way if, if there were if they saw Nanacha, Abakio, Bruno and Mista in the Sleeping Slaves and then Mista didn't die then there would be something to say about this but no it just happened like it was supposed to oh. but we humans are also unique in that our consciousness bestows us with a free will unlike most other beings our souls can be steeled and filled with resolve, and it is this resolve that we can use to face our- You use resolve twice in one <laughs> sentence. I, I have never heard nothing like that. And this man is automatically just assuming we have souls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, didn't they have the soul gemstone thing that they cut and crushed the and- The worst. And will never bring up again Don't, and I never brought up- I forgot about that when I was watching it. I'm like, what the f is that? <laughs> Is this an anime thing? Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> Our destinies. Our individual actions might not mean much alone, but through consistent collective resolve and sacrifice, they can cause ripples in fate. No, because it's fate. <sighs> fate is. Naranja changed nothing. What ripple did he make? If you're supposed to meet somebody, if you're fated to meet somebody, even if you go halfway across the world, they'll find you some way because you're fated to meet. That's what fate is. Multiplying and strengthening each other until they eventually cause enough cumulative change to create a better future. It is human. So they change fate. Impossible. But he just said impossible. That's not possible. He, he just talking out both sides of his mouth. Humanity's privilege and providence that our heart and soul can interact with fate in this way. And this is what Golden Wind is about. At the heart of all of Jojo lay the themes of fate and humanity. Enough. And every part <laughs> says something different about these two ideas and their relationship. And Vinto Aureo is about how humanity can live out its will and ambition even in a world of predetermined fate. It's a story about you. No, they can't, because if it's predetermined fate, it's determined. Sleeping slaves still happen. They died. It all worked out the way it was supposed to. You can just live your life up until the moment that you die. So that's what it's all about? Isn't that just what life is about? Humans looking for And it's not like sleeping slaves went, on this journey, now three people are going to die. It's just like, oh, these three are going to die now. They could have died seven years later. And Sleeping Slave still is correct. <laughs> Just like Boingo. Fate in the eye, accepting what it might hold for them, and yet moving forward with their ambitions. This Boy, Boingo is fate. And it's unchanging. That's his, that was his whole thing. And then, oh, he got shot in the face, but it was actually the book that got shot through. No. And then, hey, guess what? Split through the face. Twice it happened. That fate was un unchanging. He said, listen to a book. It's going to happen. And then guess what? It happened. Just May like have been 20 book. years later. Happened. 
And that's what fing fate is! It happens! It's the tale of Giorno and Bruno, two young like men, waking up from their slumber and breaking the chains that bind them in a noble effort to better the lives of those around them. It's the oh, tale of- Breaking the chains that bind them? The chains of fate? Are they breaking fate, sir? The unchanging fate? That's impossible. ...of Diavolo, a demented, inhuman monster that both fancies himself fate's chosen one, yet runs from and denies it at any opportunity. It's a story about humanity's will, and how even though our actions might be preordained, they are not meaningless. We don't have to- There is no meaning if they're preordained. <laughs> there is no meaning to shooting somebody if you were predetermined to do that. If I'm gonna die tomorrow, it doesn't matter if I empty my bank account to, to charity or whatever. Still gonna die. Be sleeping slaves to our fates. The will, resolve, and truth our actions can- WHAT TRUTH?! He's a shining example, that's the truth. Resolve. Hey! Leader. The lie! This is- this is just buzzwords. <laughs> it is a bunch of buzzwords! Like, every 15 seconds, he's got an alarm that just goes- It just pops up a buzzword, it's like, no, well, I guess I gotta say truth now. <laughs> Oh, shining, shining again? I just said shining. Oh, well. Resol oh, dang. I missed my last resolve. Better work in, too. <laughs> Me born from can, even in this vast, cruel universe, make a difference. Ever so slight. You didn't make a difference because fate. What difference did Nanacho make? Fate accounts for the difference. So there is no difference. So it's meaningless! Final destination, they were all gonna die. Guess what? They all died. Even Doesn't when matter what happens. No, we, we took an airplane. We got we went to the dentist. Doesn't matter, you gonna die. Things look completely out of our control, as if an invisible hand is guiding us. We humans can find a way to pursue happiness, righteousness, and truth out of our truth. own accord and free will. Our existence If fate and destiny exists. There is no free will because you're predetermined to do it. Does he understand what words he's talking about? Here? I can go out and go, tomorrow I'm going to start my serial killer rampage. And if I was fated to do that, I was always going to do that. I can't struggle against it because fate determined on such and such date, I start my serial killer rampage. If you go, if there's just like, oh, there's this fortune teller that is a hundred percent right, <laughs> never un unright. They tell you to date, the time, everything, and you go, what's gonna happen? You're gonna become a serial killer tomorrow at five o'clock. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna sit in the house. Nothing's gonna make me mad enough to do that. And then you see something on the news, just like, well, I guess I'm a serial killer now. I'm sick of Trump and his boy. I'm sick of this corrupt world. Somebody breaks into your house and kills everybody, and then you just start killing everybody otherwise. Start killing criminals. It's, it's... <laughs> this is so it gross. isn't chained to our destiny because we have the means to rise up and steal ourselves. As long as we can... Still Are we chained to our destiny or no? Steal ourselves for what? Against what? Fate? Because fate comes! Fate is! Narancha didn't know he was going to die during that journey. They all walked in there with the possibility of like, this is death coming if y'all step through this. And they all took it. It's not a fate, it's a possibility. Face the world head on, make no excuses, and don't run from it. We can imprint on reality and leave a meaningful mark on the world that maybe, just maybe... Pause. It doesn't matter if you're seeking truth or seeking out resolve or whatever i helped the lady with her uh freaking stroller off the bus the other day i feel like i made a difference in her day Absolutely. i ain't gotta i ain't gotta change the world if i won the lottery tomorrow and opened a charity i left my imprint no matter what and you didn't do anything and i didn't do anything <laughs> but play a bunch of random numbers it's just like getting stabbed with the arrow. He didn't do anything to earn that. He just got it. 
the arrow was flying through the air and, and somebody just went, all right, mister, stab yourself with the arrow. He could have easily just been that. Maybe. But he didn't earn anything to get to that point. Lasts longer than we do. And this is why I think Golden Wind is perfect. It chooses an idea and infuses every part of its world, its characters, and its story with that idea. What's it idea? carries its themes into every nook and cranny of its narrative and uses this to create a consistent and ins Is the theme that fate is impossible to change and that they struggle against it, but they it don't matter? Cause you, oh, that can't be cause you just said no. I hate to do this, but this dude is legit watching Jojo Raw. Because from episode one, he, <laughs> he had to sit there and just go, oh, and now everything in there is just go, where I'm looking for fate. I'm looking for destiny. I'm looking for these themes. He's not doing anything but looking for these themes. See, this, this is the way I look at things. I super enjoy just watching stuff. I sit back and I watch it. But I can catch things. I don't need to just sit there and think I'm going to look for things. And he's going, it's in every nook and cranny. It's in every character. It's in everything. So he's just going, theme, 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 theme. You're not looking at, does this fight make sense? Does it make sense for the, for her arm to be bleeding when, when it was zippered up? And you know what? If you think JoJo's Part 5 is thematically perfect, that's fine. But this is not perfect. It's a part it's the worst part the fights are terrible the characters don't it matter outside of like four people they have half a personality between them <laughs> geo loses all personality when he meets the gang like it's terrible it's got some of the worst fights in jojo baby face is terrible baby face is terrible but it's not thematically terrible and that's all he cares about I can't even say that because he went into the whole, it's Rome and it feels real. What's that got to do with themes? <laughs> Legit. So what, is, what does that even matter? Why even bring it up if you're not going to bring it up in the wrap up? This is why it's perfect. Because it, it, all the themes are in the nooks and crannies. But what about that whole 10 minute Rome thing? Insightful message on humanity's inherent struggle with the idea of fate. It, like every story, has its shortcomings, but when compared to the achievements of Wait. the storyteller- You have not mentioned one! I can't imagine doing an overall One Piece review and not going, New Fishman Island wasn't good! I didn't I enjoy it, boy. Dude, doing a whole thing and just not mentioning Jinbei when I hate Jinbei? Even little minor things, they're just like, all oh, the women look, look the same. I'm not gonna mention that. You've not mentioned a single flaw. You've gone, um, um, uh, clashing talking heads is one of my least favorite moments in all of this part. Why? You didn't give a reason. And then you went, this, this is amazing. He went, this is great. He, he even lifted all these positives, and it's like, why is it one of your least favorite parts? What? I am more than willing to overlook them. To me, Golden Wind represents both a lamentation of humanity's shackles. Oh, what? Well, you see, that he has to be thinking about this all throughout. He's just watching, going, "How are they shackled, and how are they gonna be unveiled from this?" Oh, man in the mirror. He was unshackled from his hand, and now he's fighting against fate. That's his thought process while watching this stuff. Not going, "Wow, that's kind of stupid." I'm going, no, it makes sense thematically with fate. And yet a celebration of the glorious human spirit capable of breaking those exact chains. How can you break the chains if they all still died? Nothing changed! Nothing mattered. We can all wake up and seize our lives as long as we face it head on. But you know what? If that's what we're fated to do, that's what we're gonna do! <laughs> Cause that's what fate is! If you believe in fate and destiny, you do not believe in struggle. You don't believe in changing it. You don't believe in meaning. Because it's meaningless if you believe that you're fated to do everything you're gonna do. <laughs> Legit. So yes, this part was meaningless. Yes, 
your video was meaningless! No. <laughs> that this message, along with everything else, is communicating. What's everything else? What? <laughs> Truth. <laughs> Truth. Communicated <laughs> and executed masterfully. Uh, it, it wasn't. It Hope, shut up. It wasn't it, executed it, it, masterfully. It was zero percent masterful. Cause if you if you did it masterfully, you wouldn't have to turn to the camera and go faint. You wouldn't have to turn to the camera and go, "This is my resolve." That's not what a master does. Oh, it's resilience. It's tragedy. It's resolve. It's a story. It's, it's a story about people who might die so they have a mission so all of those things are inherent in a do it's fate Ugh. it's life this is why i love part five so much this is why i think that this story is perfect this is the brilliance of golden wind I feel like Kyle, after he watched Passion of the Christ, he just turned away from the camera and puking on himself. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what are you doing? Okay, I guess that's just it. I mean, we can let it keep playing. I'm just gonna turn it down. What the fuck? That was a that was a really bad video. Yeah, it wasn't good. It, it, it wasn't even about, you know, how he edited it or anything. It's literally, this is what I think. And it all fits into what I think. Absolutely. Because this is what I'm looking for. You're looking for it, so you're going to find it. I've always said that if you're looking for problems, you're going to find it. I can go to the thing I love the most the in most. this world. And you just go, I'm going to ignore everything else but the problems. And you're going to find it. And if you can't, that is a problem. Then you have to make a problem. Then you have to make good things by saying fate and destiny a hundred thousand times. If he came out with a video that went the incompetence of Golden Wind to, you know, supplant this to, like, counter it. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, fine. You had your complete blowjob video, and you had your complete this is bush video. And I can't argue against it because you believe both of these things. But you're just going nuts in my mouth. You're going, it's perfect. For you, that's fine. It's perfect. But, dude, come on. You didn't mention a single flaw. If you say it's perfect, if you believe it's perfect, that's fine. But you presented it. You didn't present your perfection well. Because you're just going fames and fate and blah, blah, blah. And you and have to look at, you have to watch this part with those things in mind. But what if you don't want to? What if you just want to watch Babyface fight? Without the themes and crap bogging it down. You got to watch part five as a whole in order to enjoy it. That's why week that's by week. That's what you believe. That's why week by week by week, you're just going, oh, how does this fit into the fate and the resolve and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess I'll see. So are you at a zero up until the moment that Sleeping Slaves happen and it all recontextualizes it like you said, and then it becomes perfect? Because that's pretty sh -y. That's the wrap-up of this video. Dude. And he has, like, four other part five videos. You know the next video I want to do? That, uh, why, uh, Jiren is a good character. <laughs> oh, we also still got to get that GT one. But, yeah, that why Jiren is a... Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, this, this is This is legit a zero video for me. There, there was no substance in it. There's, there's hardly you know what? anything. It's, I it's think. gonna be a zero for me too, because he repeated so many of his points, but his points contradict each, uh, themselves, mm -hmm. and then he didn't expand on certain points. I still don't know what this truth is, and you keep saying resolve and fate, but again, if it's fate, the resolve don't matter because you were always fated to have that resolve. 
fate favors people that does this, this, and this. No, fate is just fate. Fate is just fate. And you're fated to be this way. What Up until the point of his death, what did uh, Dia, Dia do to f- get fate's favor? Because he was... He was very prosperous. He's the leader of a gang that he basically created. What did he do? Or was it just fate? In which case, he didn't work for it. Same thing. It's, it's very... It's, it's, it's a spicy video that I give a hot... If he hadn't mentioned one flaw, I'd push it up to a one. But it's, it's zero flaws. Him just going, yeah, there's flaws, there's flaws and everything. And not mentioning or showing or doing anything. Even if it was just a quick list of seven flaws. If it was like, here's just flaws and everything. This is, even this if, and this is, this is, this is. Even the, 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 the characters are overly designed. I don't like that, but you get used to it. I'd like, fine. But he gives zero flaws. He actively avoids flaws by going, this is my least favorite. And gives zero flaws. Mm. This was fun, though. Yeah. <laughs> it always um, is. If anybody uh, agree with his points more than ours, check his video. I mean, check his channel out. Subscribe to it. Like it. Whatever you want to do. I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I would say that I would love to debate this dude, but we'd be debating two different points. Mm-hmm. We'd be character story, progression, and he'd just be like, but no, but fate, though. It'd be like debating a Christian. It's just like, well, it's in this book, so it's, it's, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's nothing I can say against that. When I'm going, well, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This fight was bad because all Jordo did was just like, well, I'm going to pop my throat back in. He's going, oh, I, you changed. I'm going to change you. And he made, he got bit. He's going, no, but the fate, it was all about the fate and the, and the resolve in that fight that you didn't. And it's just like, okay, dude. Hold. I'm going to say a last thing about this. You can say a last thing if you want before or after. Uh... To me, his video is very much like horoscopes. Where someone's like, what's my horoscope? And they see it and they go, that describes me perfectly. Mm-hmm. It's like they just did this nebulous description of people. And it's like, this is me. Mm-hmm. Geminis are bipolar. They get angry and they get happy really mm-hmm. quickly. Everybody does. So? Oh, you're you're... You have a high capacity to love people. So does everybody. Mm-hmm. All the signs. Like, what is... It doesn't matter. And, and that's what this video yeah. is. It's a bunch of, this is the theme, and it fits it perfectly. And how many times did we go... It happens in other stories, in other JoJo parts, the other characters. But no, In this only, part. <laughs> it only matters to him in this moment. He has such tunnel vision because he says that this is perfect, that he can't even fathom anything else boy do i love hate watching stuff it's so great like i said this is fun what is it like four hours that's just yeah yeah much. it's about four times four times what he did fantastic